Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm taking a look at four different drink gadgets to see if they really work. That's today's video. All right, this should be an interesting video as I've got products all the way from kids having milk with their cereal to adults keeping their beer cool, but they're all drink gadgets. So let's look at the contenders right now. We have the Asian TV Magic Tap. This has been around for a long time. And in fact, I actually bought this quite a while ago. Hopefully it still works. This one supposedly lets you put it on top of bottles and dispense liquids. So we shall see. Next up is a beer chiller stick. This one goes in the freezer and then it goes inside of a bottle of beer and you can still drink through it. So we'll see if it actually works. This is the Tappy from Dream Farm. This actually goes on your tap and allows you to use your tap, but close off the bottom and also use it as a drink fountain. We'll see how that goes. Chill-O-Matic. This is a device that allows you to put a room temperature can in there and get it ice cold in a minute or less. We'll see how that goes. The claims of the Chillomatic is that you add ice and you have a cold drink in 60 seconds. The reviews on Amazon say that it pretty much works as advertised and it's cheaper than other options out there. The cons, some people said they wish there was a cord so you could plug it in the wall and not go through batteries, which I understand that. Other people said it was cheaply made, it jammed up, and it was noisy. So let's unbox it and test it out. We've got some instructions and we've got the, the unit itself. Very, very fancy. This takes two AA batteries. I actually thought this was a plastic holder for the unit itself. This is the unit itself. It's very cheap feeling. That doesn't mean it won't work though. Wow, wow is that cheap. I guess this is the battery compartment. Oh, here we go, okay. All right, we gotta throw a couple batteries in there. So then I slide the battery compartment right there. Oh, I expected it to snap. It didn't really snap. It just kind of rests there. And then I have this suction cup that has to go somewhere. Looks like maybe it goes down in there. The battery is slid into place, firmly attached to the bottom of the drink can to the suction cup. Let's just get started and see how it goes. I've got a beautiful can of soda here. This is room temperature. Just for the record, these room temperature sodas are about 72, 73 degrees. All right, so I touch the suction cup to the battery compartment. All right, here we go. Oh, it's stuck. It's holding it. All right, so we're gonna slide it in there. It's just kind of resting in there. There's nothing to hold the top of that can from being kind of tilted downward. But that doesn't make me matter. Add ice to the top area of the can, replace the lid. It says you don't need to add a lot of ice to it. My $1 store ice cube tray. I've only got six cubes in there. It says you don't need a lot of ice. So let's see if that's actually accurate or not. I can squeeze a seventh piece in there. All right, we got seven pieces now. It says we need to go for 60 seconds. I got my stopwatch and here we go. Can't wait for my nice ice cold soda. And we're off. Whoa, how interesting. It's a bit loud. It's kind of making a clanking sound now like when a washing machine is off balance. All right, one minute exactly. Now I expect a nice cold soda. Here we go. It looks like the ice is about half melted. All right, it came off easily, good, good, good. It feels pretty cold in my hand like it's been in the fridge. Let me, uh, let me try a temperature test. Oh yeah, look at this. We're down to the 40s. First use, it was a resounding success. I don't think I could have asked for better results than that. Maybe it's a little bit loud. Maybe I'll try one a little bit longer and see how cold it actually gets. This one's down to 48 degrees. They say 90 seconds will be even colder. Let's try one for 90 seconds and see how that goes. I should also point out there's some water in there and the ice has this interesting shape where it took on the contour of the can. I have to admit, I'm kind of a fan of this after one use. We'll see how it goes for the second one, but I'm, I'm a little surprised that it worked that well. Room temperature can. I'm getting fast at this now. I had seven pieces of ice, that seemed to be perfect. This time we're going 90 seconds to see how cold it gets. And, and we're off. It almost seems like it's spinning faster the second time. Oh, not anymore. It just slowed down. I guess where the ice placement is is gonna affect how fast it spins or not. All right, 90 seconds is up. I wonder how much cooler this is gonna get. Let's check it out. Feels nice and cold too. I'm not sure how much colder it feels than the other one. We've got our original in here, which is about 50 degrees. It's only been out for a couple minutes. Let's try the new one. I really think either one works pretty well. I don't know what else you could really ask for. It does seem like it worked as it's supposed to. So as far as the Chillomatic goes, I think it worked. Before I give the Chillomatic too much credit, let's see if a common hack will actually do the same thing without a device. Actually two hacks. In this bowl, I'm gonna try the standard 
ice water salt technique. And in this one, I'm gonna see if I can simulate the Chillomatic with just ice. I've got a couple of room temperature cans. These will be about 73 degrees. Let's get started. I watched several different versions of these online. It looked like most of them lasted about two minutes. So first thing I do is add some water, which I've done here. All right, add some ice, two tablespoons of salt. Stirred really well. Now add the first can. Now I start the timer. So this one I got ice in here. I'm gonna spin this the whole time. After one minute, I'm supposed to stir this one. All right, this is at one minute, stir this one. Give it a stir. I'm trying to emulate the Chillomatic here. This is the same motion the Chillomatic does. All right, it's been two minutes. It's been two minutes. Oh, that feels nice and cold. My fake Chillomatic feels nice and cool. Let's see. This is my fake Chillomatic, which actually had about the same results. The ice bath seemed like it needed to stay in another minute. I'm kind of happy with the fake Chillomatic spinning motion. I'm a little disappointed in this one, but maybe I just need to tinker with it a little bit as well. I did see some versions of the ice bath that said five minutes and not two minutes, so maybe five minutes would have been better. My fake Chillomatic for two minutes came pretty close, so what that tells me is there are hacks out there that if you play with them, you probably get them pretty close to what the Chillomatic can do. But it was fun to try those hacks, and I'll move on to the next item. Tell me what you guys think if the hacks are better than the Chillomatic. Let's see what's next. Next. This is the Tappy from Dream Farm. It's about six bucks. It goes over your tap and allows you to use it as a drinking fountain. The pros on Amazon say that it's an ingenious invention and saves money on disposable cups. The cons say that it might be difficult for small children to operate and it can get kind of messy. Well, let's check it out and see if it actually works. Let me just put it over my uh, tap and see what happens. All right, so far so good. Now you can supposedly squeeze this off Oh yeah, look at this. Some people said you could just push the bottom like this. Oh yeah, that's kind of fun. I think kids could probably put their finger there and, and operate it successfully. Let me try a different tap and see if it works in there. This tap is a little bit different design because I've got kind of a lip here. It doesn't fit as well on that one. Yeah, it's not, it's not going to fit on this particular tap. It's not gonna fit. Let me try one more. Oh, this one's kind of larger. Wow, it's not gonna, it's not gonna fit there. I did know on the instructions for the tappy, it says tappy fits onto almost any tap with a straight spout. The first bathroom had a straight spout, but it had a lip on it, which prevented it from going over there. And the second bathroom didn't have a straight spout. So if you have a straight spout, I guess it'll work. Otherwise, probably not for you. This is the Magic Tap as seen on TV. Now, I don't think they really make these anymore. So the ones you buy are probably either old or knockoffs. I bought this one about a year and a half ago, but let's take a look at some of the pros and cons. The claim is that it can fit most bottles and jugs and the kids can dispense milk into the cereal without having to touch the milk container. On Amazon, the pros, people said that it worked great and there was no mess. For the cons, people said that milk was getting into the battery compartment and it's difficult to clean. So uh, let's check it out. Here we go. Oh wow, look at this. It's kind of yellowed already. Like I was saying, I think that the ones on Amazon are probably older. This looks like it's pretty old already. And I just opened it up. Got some instructions here. All right, so first thing I gotta do is put the uh, batteries in here. All right, so you're supposed to just put that part in the, uh, in the bottle and then press this, to, whoa, to dispense. Well, at least it seems like it works. I noticed in the instructions it says it's not for carbonated drinks and not for alcoholic beverages. So you're out of luck as far as that goes. All right, so uh, I guess I'm ready to start doing some dispensing. Maybe I should clean this off first. In fact, maybe I should run some water through there to make sure there's nothing nasty in the, uh, in the tube. All right, just kind of like a simple siphon. So let me see if it actually just works the first time. Oh yeah. Well, that handle is very loose. Look at this. But it works. It seems to work pretty well. So let me try some uh, actual drinks through here. There's something floating in there too. That's not very good. Good thing I ran some water through it first. All right, this cup has been rinsed off, so there's nothing floating in there again. All right, I'm going to insert the magic tap into the apple juice. And this just kind of rests on there, I guess. So it says hold the glass or bowl up to the dispenser itself. I mean, it does dispense liquid. I can't really complain about it. It seems to do what it's supposed to do. Didn't affect the taste at all, I don't think. What I worry about is it would be easy to accidentally bump this in the fridge and then you're gonna have juice all over the fridge. Let me try some cranberry juice and see how that goes. Oh, see, I just accidentally hit that and got juice on my hand. All right, is there anything in here still? 
It doesn't seem to retain much in the tube itself, so that's, that's good. They say to clean it, you're supposed to put it in a gallon jug of water and detergent and run it through there. Is there any liquid in the battery compartment itself? Let's see. All right, well, I don't see any, there's no liquid in there. Some people are saying milk was getting there. I'm not experiencing that. I'm not doubting that they did, but I'm not getting that. Let's try a completely full bottle of cranberry juice. Put my yellow magic tap over there. All right, here we go. It seems pretty simple and it seems like it works. Oh, I noticed there was some juice left over in there and it just ended up down there. I think you're gonna have a problem with getting juice in your fridge, especially if someone accidentally bumps the trigger. Oh, what I was afraid of just happened. As I was pulling it out of the cranberry juice container, I bumped the trigger and look at this, not good. There should have been some sort of a safety latch or something so you can lock that trigger from being so trigger happy. There does seem to be some remnants of juice in there, which I gotta get out before I try it with my milk. I'm just gonna try it in a cup of water. This is so easy to hit though. All right, I think it's cleaned off, cleaned out. Let's try some milk and then wrap this one up. Now it's one thing to spill juice, another thing to spill milk. Yee. I'm almost nervous about this thing. I really feel like I'm gonna hit this and get milk everywhere. All right, it works. I'm nervous about it, but it works. That trigger is too sensitive for me. I think that it does seem like it would be a good idea in some cases, but I think the risk of spilling outweighs the benefits of using the magic tap. This is the chiller stick. It's a simple device. You simply put it in the freezer, you put it in your bottle of beer and it'll keep your beer cold. I bought this at a Kohl's a while back. I haven't tried it out yet. Let's check it out. There are several versions of this idea out there. This is just the one I happen to find. And there we go. Directions in the back of the box. It says freeze for one to two hours. Take a sip of your beer first to allow some room. Insert it into your beer. Press firmly to create a tight seal. And then you can drink through there while it keeps your beer cold. What I'm not sure about is will it get a beer cold from room temperature or will it just keep a beer cold? I'm gonna have to try both versions of that. But first I gotta freeze it for a couple hours and then get started. Completely room temperature bottle of beer. So for my first test, I'm gonna stick it in room temperature bottle of beer and see if it cools it off. And then we'll try it with a cool bottle of beer and see how it keeps it cold. All right, fresh out of the freezer. There we go. You should make sure you have a good seal, which that seems pretty sealed. So I guess I'll wait about 10 minutes and then pour some out and see if it's the same temperature as when the chiller stick went in there. And then I'm gonna try it again in another half hour. Before I let it sit 10 minutes, let me try a sip out of here and see how it actually works. Mm. Nice room temperature beer. The chiller stick was cold, the beer wasn't, but we'll wait 10 minutes and see if it cools off at all. The reason I chose 10 minutes is because how long do you want your beer to sit out before you actually start drinking it? Not to mention that I would think at some point the chiller stick's gonna start warming up. So I don't think more than 10 minutes is gonna be really useful. So I thought 10 minutes was kind of a good amount of time, but we shall see. 10 minutes, let's check it out. All right, I don't wanna pour this into another container because the container might affect the temperature. I'm just gonna kind of tilt it like this. Well, I mean, it cooled it off a little bit. Not a lot. It went down about nine degrees. Is that impressive? I'm not, I'm not really sure if that's impressive or not. Let me see. Well, I mean, it went from warm beer to cool beer, not cold beer. So let me try one more test with this. I'm gonna take two cold beers and put them out and let the chiller stick see if it keeps one cooler longer and see if that might be a good use for it. So I'm gonna rinse this off, put it back in the freezer and in two more hours, we'll try the next test. Time for the chiller stick test number two. Got two cold beers fresh out of the fridge. And here's what I'm gonna do. First, I'm gonna open these up and take the temperature. Roughly 48 degrees. I'm gonna add the chiller stick to one and I'm gonna check these in about an hour and see how much cooler this one is than the other one. We're just gonna leave them sitting here. The chiller stick is in one. The other one's just gonna sit here. One hour later, we'll come back and do the temperature. There wasn't a huge difference when it went from room temperature to cold. Maybe it keeps a beer cold better than it actually cools one off. It's been an hour and let's see how they compare. I'm gonna take the chiller stick out of here. 58 degrees. Now for the non-chiller stick, 62 degrees. It's not really that much of a difference. Four degrees over an hour. I mean, I guess it keeps it cooler. Um, it doesn't not work, but is it impressive? 
I'm not sure about that. Well, I think I've got everything I need to wrap this thing up. So let's recap, shall we? First up with the chill matic It actually works surprisingly well. I was surprised it worked. And there are hacks out there that will probably do the same thing, but if you want something that's a little bit hands-off, more foolproof, chill matic if you don't mind paying the 25 bucks for it, it's actually not a bad product. As far as the tappy goes, I don't really have much else to say. If you have a faucet that it will fit, then it'll probably work well for you. Just make sure that before you order it, that it will actually fit your faucets. As far as the Magitap goes, I understand what they're going for here, but this trigger is so touchy. I think it's going to end up creating more problems than it solves. So I'm not really a big fan of the magic tap. As far as the chiller stick goes, if you're someone who sits there and sips on a beer over a long period of time, it might keep it a little bit cooler, but I really wouldn't have very high expectations for something like this. It keeps it cooler, but it, the results are pretty minimal. So that's all I've got. If you've tried any of these products, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.